All right, today I'll be replacing the rear shock absorbers in my 2005 Honda Pilot. As you can see, I've already got the rear tire off and the vehicle up on wooden packing. For this job, I got a 17 millimeter socket, which uh, is for both the top and bottom nuts, a torque wrench, some penetrant spray, an extension for the socket, a breaker bar, an axle stand, and I do have an extra jack, but you could do it with one. Uh, and I do, I definitely recommend having some wooden packing on hand. Uh, it just makes life a little bit easier. Taking a quick look at the shock that's on the vehicle, you see there's one bolt up top. If you get down low on the bottom, it is connected by one nut with a uh, washer that also comes off right there. I've already sprayed this with penetrant spray. I got the 17 millimeter socket attachment on there, the breaker bar and the extension. And you can see that I'm using a axle stand. Just get a little bit better leverage on there. These actually came off surprisingly easy. The breaker bar was probably not required and just the torque wrench uh, probably could have done it. Even the axle stand might not be required uh, in my case. However, there's a chance that if you go to do this that uh, you'll have seized up bolts. And there you can see it. Uh, it's not in terrible condition, but before I put it back in, I do uh, clean it up with some oil and a wire brush. Now to get at the bottom one, I'm just going to use the large torque wrench that I had purchased with the 17 millimeter socket on it. And same deal, this is a, a nut and it came off no problem. It wasn't frozen in any way. And again, I did use the penetrant spray. And there it is. Like I said, there is a nut and a washer. And you can see where the shock attaches to the vehicle right there. Now since I was using my jack to hold up the lower arm, I'm just going to release the uh, air out of the jack so the lower arm slowly drops and that'll pull the suspension down and be a little bit easier to pull it out. I use my uh, child's hammer and uh, just give it a few uh, dozen taps there and pop it out. Uh, not very difficult. On the bottom, I just use the hammer and a crowbar, just give it a few taps to uh, break it loose and get it moving off the uh, lower connector. From the top, I then just compress the shock absorber a little bit and the whole unit slides off pretty easily. Um, not a whole lot of difficulty in this. In fact, uh, you know, 15 minutes and it was off. So you can see the attaching point there. Uh, where the top bolt goes through and down at the bottom you can see uh, the attachment for the nut and here's a quick side by side of the old Honda shock and the new uh, Monroe shock that I picked up and these uh, Monroe shocks were $60 I got them on a 25% off sale so I got both of them for 120 and I got the torque wrench for another 60 so the first thing I'm gonna do is slide the shock in from the top and attach it to the lower connecting point first. Once it's on, I'm just going to go to the top, compress it uh, slightly so that it kind of slides into place at the top as well, and then just slowly uh, work it from uh, both the top and the bottom and slide it into place. So now it's on the bottom. And the top you can see that it's a little bit low so what i'm going to do is uh, go to the jack and underneath the lower arm i'm going to just raise up the jack a little bit so the until the the holes line up so that i can slide the uh, bolt through and attach the upper mounting point for the shock so prior to sliding it in i'm going to throw a little bit of loctite on there uh, i don't envision these ever coming out again so might as well. Now the torque spec that I'm going to use on both the upper and lower uh, bolt and nut is 47 foot-pounds. And as mentioned, there's also the washer 
it needs to be replaced on the uh, lower connecting point for the shock. Once that's done, all you gotta do is slap the tire back on, tighten up the lug nuts to uh, spec, and lower your vehicle, and you are ready to start on the next side. It is recommended that you always replace your shocks in pairs. Now, a couple uh, lessons I learned from doing the driver's side is that you want your vehicle up uh, as high as you can get it. it. makes it a little easier, so I added a little bit of wood packing, which is why I now have the tire underneath the uh, jack stand. And uh, same deal, 17 millimeter socket. I got the extension on there and freed it up with a breaker bar and then went to the torque wrench. But honestly, it wasn't that hard to get that bolt out. The penetrating spray probably also helped there. Uh, and this time I brought the dog. So you can see slight bit of rust there, but overall pretty good condition. On the bottom, this is the first time I use this penetrant. Works pretty good, no issues. And again, same deal. I just went straight for the torque wrench to get the lower nut off the uh, mounting point, and I had no issues breaking it free. And there you can see taking the nut off as well as the washer. So this was a little bit harder than the driver's side to get out. Uh, in this instance, instead of just using a child's hammer, I used the uh, crowbar and just pushed it down a little bit manually and it fell right out of place. Now the, the good thing with these old shocks is that you compress them and they don't really spring back. As you can see it's just sitting there so it is pretty easy to get out as long as you can compress the, the shock. And the same deal, I'm going to slide this one in from the top, get it on the lower mounting point and then I'm going to jack up the lower arm on the passenger side until the holes line up and I can slide the upper mounting bolt uh, through those two holes. There's one thing I uh, didn't film on the driver's side is uh, just slapping a little bit of Loctite on the, uh, the threads, putting the washer on, and then uh, putting the nut on. So I got this uh, nut on the bottom not all the way to uh, 47 foot-pounds. I just got it in there uh, loose and I tightened the top one up first in both uh, instances. And again, a little bit of Loctite on the bolt, slide it in, and then torque it down to 47 foot-pounds. And of course, once you get it on, put the tire on and lower your vehicle and you should be good to go. Now, Honda quoted me about $750 to do this job, $250 for each shock and $250 for labor plus taxes. I got both shocks for $120 and the torque wrench for $60 for a total of $180. So massive savings uh, doing this by yourself. Uh, anyway, thanks for checking out the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe.